All right. Hi, everyone. Today I'm going to introduce you to Japanese tattoos. Now, that phrase alone may elicit a response out of you, but if you don't know much about the history, you may be surprised at how old the tradition is and how it is treated today. On a quick side note, I chose this topic because I was fortunate enough to visit Japan for a two week study abroad course in my undergrad program. Since it was a cultural immersion course, I had to choose one aspect of the culture to research before visiting. Obviously, I chose the art of Japanese tattoos. On another note, I do not speak Japanese, so please excuse my poor pronunciations. I will try my best to say the words correctly, though. So, Japanese tattoos, or the Japanese word um, irazume, refers to any of the traditional styles of tattooing in Japan. And tattoos have a long history in Japan. Indigenous people were tattooing as far back as 10,000 BCE. The full body tattoos we think of today, showing tigers or koi fish, dragons, other mythical creatures, and whatnot, came about during the Edo period in the 17th century. And so, this little image that popped up, you may have seen at art museums, their woodblock prints, um, influenced from mythical stories, and these really created the ideas for these big tattoos. They are pretty cool. So continuing with the history, you might find these photos a little interesting. In the 19th and 20th century, tattoos were outlawed. They became associated with criminals, and people with tattoos were barred entry into public bathhouses or hot springs. And so this photo is an example of one of those, a modern day, like a hot spring where people go, and another little sign down there barring entry for people with tattoos. And so when I was in Japan, I didn't really see any public bathhouses or hot springs during my stay there, but we did get to talk to a lot of Japanese college students that would accompany us on different tours. So I decided to ask the three of them, you know, what their thoughts were on tattoos. The female student became very shy and was like, you probably shouldn't talk about that in so many words. Another student was like, well, you know, they're just not very professional. That's all he had to say. He wasn't very interested in the topic. And another student did bring up the possibility of not being able to go into these hot springs. But as a young man, he said he didn't really frequent these, that this may be something that maybe the older people were more into. But again, those are just three small stories from what I heard there. But it is a true thing if you do do further research, um, some areas like this where you might be nude in public or in a swimsuit may not let you in if you have a tattoo. So today in Japan, tattoos are still somewhat associated with criminals. It's hard to shake the, the, that history from the 19th and 20th century. And um, the large criminal organization you may have heard of, the Yakuza in Japan, were kind of associated with getting those full body tattoos, but now, like a lot of people are getting them, you may know people here who get tattoos like that, that aren't necessarily going to Japan to get those tattoos. And with the influence from the West, as you can see from these photos, many young people are getting tattoos similar to what you would see here, whether that's like a quote, small script, stars, hearts, things like that, that are small and maybe easy to conceal. And I wanted to take a look at another modern tattoo parlor. So just open this up. So this is a pretty famous one in Shibuya. And as you can see from just the first image that popped up, um, not really a traditional style Japanese tattoo that you may think of, but still something very important to the Japanese. Deer are sacred to a lot of people. Here's like a shrine. Oh, and then here we can see some more of like maybe something you would see here or a different stylized type of koi fish. So you see they kind of have a broad range, just like here, of people getting all kinds of different tattoos. And so the history, again, going back, here's a foreigner getting a tattoo. Um, this illustration picturing that, I just thought that was cool to show. This fascination with Japanese style tattoos has been going on for a long time. So I wanted to conclude this with showing you a modern day master of the Tabori style tattoo in Japan, which would be not using a tattoo gun or any type of modern machinery. So his tattoos are done all by hand, the old school way, and he does the traditional style. And his name is Horimitsu, and these are from his Instagram page if you want to check out more. Another thing I'll add is the only time I saw tattoos in Japan were in Osaka. I saw a handful of people that had 
maybe a star somewhere visible on their calf. It is a big city and it was like a night out. So people are wearing, you know, skirts or dresses to where you could see skin. And I did see a young man wearing a dress shirt kind of with the sleeves rolled up and you could see that he had full sleeves. But again, not very brazen showing it off, just little hints of you could totally see that these people were tattooed. And that kind of sums it up. Um, I know this was a very brief history, so I hope maybe you're inspired to learn more if you're interested in the history of tattoos or Japanese tattoos in particular. And thanks for listening.